Hello, welcome to my political news opinion review of major news from August of 2020. This series is where I provide my opinion and coverage of major news stories from the previous month. This is done to provide the people with a method to hold myself accountable as I act in the capacity of a politician. This is essential as the people need to know my reactions to what is occurring around us and to ensure that everybody is able to keep track of current events. In this video, I will talk about the following news stories. Joe Biden's nominee for the vice presidency, Jacob Blake shot and Kenosha killer, the reality of voter fraud, and Donald Trump's suggestion, Trump's pardon of Susan B. Anthony, and how going back to school is going around the country as well as for me. Kamala Harris. Joe Biden nominated Kamala Harris to be his running mate in the 2020 election, making Harris the first woman of color, first person of color, and third woman to be nominated for the vice presidency on either the Republican or Democratic ticket. Parenthetically, minor parties have nominated people in these categories before and parenthetical. The daughter of a biologist from India and an economist slash professor from Jamaica, I consider Harris a leftist moderate. Leftist moderate is not to mean left of center of the political spectrum, but la but rather someone who is quite left wing, uh, who is not quite left wing enough to be progressive, nor are they as centrist as a liberal. Born and raised in California, despite another birther conspiracy now against uh, Kamala Harris occurring, she became a public servant in 1990, when she became Deputy District Attorney for Alameda County, California. Harris would later serve as Attorney General before Attorney General of California before being elected to her current position of U.S. Senator from California. She did slash does have policies that are contrary to the Black Lives Matter movement, as a former law enforcement official is likely to have. But she has been able to moderate or to a more left-wing position. She has moved to that and does have many policies to assist in criminal justice. This pick by Joe Biden is a choice a moderate would definitely pick during a time like this. Harris's uh, law enforcement background, attorney general, and is also a woman of color. The way that this is viewed by Biden and his team is her racial identity will win votes of anti-racists, people of color, and will be a copy, flip, paste, of the Obama-Biden ticket. With her background as Attorney General, making her less scary to people who find calls to defund the police or abolish the police to be extreme or uncomfortable. I believe that policy is far more important than identity, however. So I do believe that Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren would do more for both women and people of color than Kamala Harris will. While Harris was the foreseeable pick, it is still disappointing that a more progressive voice wasn't chosen. My picks, in no particular order, that would have made Joe Biden clinch my vote would be Former Ohio State Senator Nina Turner, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Senator Bernie Sanders, Representative Ayanna Presley, Representative Rashida Tlaib, Representative Pramila Jayapal, Representative Raul Grahalva, and perhaps a union ticket with the Green Party. 
if I did not mention a certain candidate you would think that I would support, it's likely due to the fact that they do not meet the requirements yet. The Biden-Harris ticket currently has my vote, but depending on the severity of the October surprise in this election, I may still vote for the Green Party nominee, Howie Hawkins. Jacob Blake shot in Kenosha Killer. On August 23rd, Jacob Blake, an African-American male, was shot in the back at point-blank range seven times while entering his vehicle by police. Reportedly, Blake <laughs> had broken up a fight prior to the shots. There was little to no reason for the violence from police. Regardless of whether Blake was dangerous or not, and regardless of whether he was threatening or not, parenthetically, he wasn't for the record, and parenthetical, seven shots directly to the spine is far too much and has only one purpose, to kill. This attack incur occurred in front of Mr. Blake's children and bystanders bystanders who seconds before had told police, quote, don't you fucking dare, end quote. Mr. Blake survived and is now paralyzed due to the shots to the back. Despite police immediately treating Jacob Blake's gunshot wounds, it is obvious that the officer who decided that seven shots into the back of Mr. Blake was necessary intended to kill him due to the color of his skin. Following this attack by police on Mr. Blake, protests broke out in Kenosha, Wisconsin. During these protests, a few armed counter-protesters showed up claiming to tr be trying to enforce the peace. Unfortunately, a 17-year-old gun-wielding individual shot into the crowd of protesters, killing two and injuring one. The 17-year-old, who does not deserve the twisted glory of having his name associated with this heinous act, violated laws in preparation of this shooting and should have been arrested for violating those laws before the shooting even occurred. Unfortunately, the law enforcement agency we have in the United States is a racist gang known as police. And so they not only let the 17-year-old break these laws, but encouraged him and allowed him to return to his home unquestioned. Before the invention of the camera phone, the 17-year-old would never have been charged as police are happy about his participation. Voter fraud, myth versus reality. For a long time, there has been a myth about widespread voter fraud. While at one time this was an issue, it is all but non-existent in the modern world. This myth has been used to create voter ID laws which discriminates against those people who don't have the need for an ID, such as my friend Amanda, who is a few years older than me yet has never had an ID, or the costs associated with obtaining an ID is prohibited, prohibitive to poorer potential voters. The myth has also been used as an argument against mail-in slash absentee voting, despite the fact that, that mail-in voting seems to lead to less voter fraud in states that use it exclusively voters enjoying the convenience, and in states where mail-in voting is standard, it enjoys bipartisan support. The only recent case of a politician encouraging voter fraud that I am aware of is that of President Trump in August. The president told North Carolinians to commit voter fraud by voting by mail and in person seemingly as a way to, quote, test the system, end quote. When somebody takes this advice, they will be arrested for a felony, 
and while the excuse, quote, the president said I should test the system, end quote, may get some of them a reduced sentence, it will make Donald Trump an accomplice in many felony voter cases. Notice, I did not make language treating this as a possibility, but rather treated it as a certainty. Susan B. Anthony pardoned. President Donald Trump decided to pardon suffragette Susan B. Anthony in an attempt to show that he is not sexist and, a, and to appeal to voters. However, Anthony was proud of her arrest in regards to fighting for the women's right to vote. Though Anthony would not like the analogy I am about to use as she campaigned against the African American's right to vote, I do think that Martin Luther King Jr. would have been happier would... Hold up, I believe I skipped over something. Do you think... Ah, it's a question. Do you think that Martin Luther King Jr. would have been happier if they didn't arrest him? If the history books didn't say he was spending time in prison to get his rights? Pardoning Susan B. Anthony is tarnishing her legacy and is something she would have opposed. Dozens of presidents across the political spectrum have never er, given Anthony a pardon because they understood this. This proves that while Donald Trump doesn't have cognitive issues according to the test he took, we may need to have him take an IQ test, which is much different. Back to school in the time of coronavirus. Back to school has been chaotic amid the coronavirus pandemic with many differing plans on how each jurisdiction will deal with the pandemic. My university chose to adopt various safety measures and test every student and staff member. So far, my school has been able to keep it under control, but in schools around the country, they have been forced online following outbreaks of the virus on campus. While it would be difficult to plan for, we should have postponed the fall semester with the potential of canceling the fall semester, which would have fundamentally changed the American education system with summer break being a mid-grade break. Of course, this would not be a great plan, but since the pandemic is still an issue, we should we, we would have to make that decision. If we had rather managed to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and or been able to defeat the virus before the fall, then returning to school as we've done would be fine. Unfortunately, COVID-19 was not handled as well as o Obama uh, handled the Ob Ebola crisis. My school is trying to be proactive and some students and or faculty have been quarantined due to potential exposure and classrooms are set up to allow for contact tracing and social distancing. Being a member of the election committee for the student government elections, we postponed the elections to the fall from the spring as we felt the pandemic would be under control by this point in time. Unfortunately, it wasn't. So we had, had won this past week with presidential slash, slash vice presidential platforms, including addressing COVID-19. I am happy to finally have a mandate for my position I was appointed to in the spring. I look forward to making SGA mean something and get things done focusing primarily on COVID-19 concerns this semester. Though if COVID-19 continues to remain a problem into the spring, then I will not compromise, but to ensure a menstrual products for all resolution is at least considered. K 
Conclusion. I have to move this out of the way. There we go. Please like this video, share it with friends and family, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, making sure to hit the bell icon. Please also check out my Instagram, at Lopez4Okill, Twitter, at Lopez4Okill, Snapchat, at Lopez4OkillWV, and Facebook, facebook.com slash colby.lopez.12, which all should be linked in the description. Please stay safe, wash your hands, understand that we must still social distance, and de-stress. I am Colby Lopez, and I approve this message.